Shall I open that door for you? The rogue Ranny inquired, after appearing from out of nowhere. He thought that it would be a simple matter to take advantage of your naivete and pocket some coin. It's my turn. Done! Yes. Oh, yeah. Since that point, you've been journeying under mutually beneficial terms. You handle combat, and Rani handles locks. You came to Hydland as an adventurer. Like many of your fellows, you strove to challenge the dangerous labyrinths here. The labyrinths were every bit as perilous as you'd heard. Most were lucky to have even their bones exit the ruins. You don't currently belong to the guild. I recommend registering. You can get jobs there and learn skills. Clad in full armor, the Guildmaster Samuel Joseph stands in the center of the Guild Hall like a statue. He appraises you with a look and dismissively states that only worthless adventurers leave their equipment in disrepair. Your travels thus far have left your equipment positively thrashed. You resolve to rectify that before returning. The Guildmaster directs you to Morgan's Magic Item Shop. To be deemed worthy by the Adventurer's Guild, you must first repair your broken equipment.
you conquer a labyrinthine set of stairs, and Morgan Lisley, shopkeeper and witch, welcomes you to her establishment. There is no object's repair which does not fall under her purview, from ornate magic staves to rusted axes. Welcome to my shop. What would you like? Adventurers come here not only for repairs, but for appraisals and to purchase magic items. You will visit Morgan often. Your equipment is now unmarred. You should return to the guild and see if the guild master deems you worthy. Once again, the guild master Samuel Joseph stands in the center of the guild hall like a statue. With your equipment now in tip-top condition, you request to join the guild. Samuel issues you a test of skill. What will you do? Your test is to help a warrior named Roland. Samuel says that you can find him in the ancient temple ruins. To prove your mettle for the Guildmaster, you head to the ancient temple ruins to assist the warrior, Roland. A magic gate was recently found in the ruins on the outskirts of town. Use that to reach your destination. Many things lie within the ruins of the old Elysian Temple. Some quiescent, some far less so. An ancient dragon spoken of in myths is said to have destroyed the Elysian civilization in the night. You liberated a fairy that was trapped in a cage. It's my turn. Done. What? You have made your way to Roland. At the guild's behest, he is looking for adventurers who went missing in the ruins. For you to pass your guild exam, you must help him. Roland tells you to search in the ruins that are submerged in water. Much time has passed since the missing were last seen. He tells you to bring back their bones if they are found dead. What? Oh, yeah. Outstanding. I got it. Voila! The Orc army is apparently getting here via the waterway. Their cargo is various articles from ships that have been reported missing. Simple. 
standing. You have found the bones of a missing adventurer. Sometimes, the dead have been known to leave behind a message right before they perish. As you investigate the wall painting, you detect that the area behind the wall has been hollowed out. More nests similar to this one spread throughout the area. You exit the area, taking care to avoid drawing the attention of any other harpies. You have fulfilled the request. Report your work to the Guildmaster. Huh! <laughs> 
you return to the guild to report your quest. However, Samuel gives you an additional task. It is possible to resurrect the dead with their bones. He tells you to go to the temple to attempt the resurrection ritual. Canaan Temple is a temple dedicated to the worship of the goddess Althena. Proceed there immediately. You were ordered to attempt to resurrect guild members at Canaan Temple. As you enter, a kindly voice echoes from the back. You seem to be in need of help, a monk says, and approaches you. The prayer of the monk sometimes restores the dead to life. Wandering one, how can I help you? Allow this heart to beat again. Quench their thirst. Lead the wandering soul back. Reverse death. And awaken them. The prayer reaches the goddess, and the pile of bones is made new. The adventurer pledges their allegiance to you as thanks. Any adventurers you resurrect will wait for you at the inn. You can now fill out your party with those who are waiting at the inn. Please be aware that if you leave an area and one of your party has fallen, they will become lost. If you encounter any bones during your questing, be sure to bring them back and resurrect them so that they can assist you. You have fulfilled the request. Report your work to the Guildmaster. After delivering your report, you think you see part of a smile cross Samuel's face. You are now registered with the Guild. You may now get cooperation from Guild members. They may participate in your party and help you in completing quests. The Adventurer's Guild has a backlog of quests, because many adventurers are occupied with the Dragon's Crown rumors. The King and his retinue left to find the Dragon's Crown and are mis- The existence of this crown that supposedly controls Dragon, Samuel hurriedly assigns you a new task. You get the feeling that he deems you reliable and trustworthy. It's a request from this country's Prime Minister. The quest's details will be provided at the castle. You wonder about the lives of the powerful people in that grand castle. Hmm. You have a request. You accepted a new request from the guild. You must go. Flanked by guards, you are led through the secure castle. 
Princess Vivian and Prime Minister Gustav awaited you. The Prime Minister speaks a lot, in contrast to the silent princess. He asks you to swear to keep this matter secret. The royal scepter has been stolen. A witness who saw the thief described him as Tomet, a known bandit. Your job is to track down Tomet and retrieve the scepter. Also, for the sake of the kingdom, this must be kept secret. Rani whispers that he knows of this Tomet. He's well known and is based out of the old capital. You bow and leave the throne room. In order to retrieve the royal scepter, you chase the thief into the ruins of the old... These are the ruins of the ancient capital city. It was destroyed following an invasion from the Northern Empire. Now it is a dangerous place, full of dragons and wyverns. <laughs> You find the bandit Tomet in a hideout amid the ruins, just as Rani told you. It is said that whatever this man desires, by thievery he can acquire. Rani asks, are you Tomet, the bandit legend? Beaming, he displays his spoils and tells the tale behind each item. When you ask about the scepter, he says, that was indeed I, and goes on to boast exactly how he got into the castle. When you inquire further about the scepter, he deduces your true intentions and darts away. Pursue the thief, apprehend him, and reclaim the scepter. You cannot capture a target swimming underwater. Watch for your quarry to surface.
Watson. You can hear the sound of a woman crying on the other side. The wall here seems thin enough to break through. so stunned that he's actually been caught, that he cannot move. Relenting, he produces the scepter from his bag and hands it to you. You have reclaimed the royal scepter, stolen from the treasure room of the castle.
You must deliver the royal scepter to the Prime Minister at the castle. request. Once again, you are led to the throne room under guard. This time, a man stands there with a presumptuous grin. The man tells you to hand over the scepter. You tell him that you don't know what he's talking about. The man's mouth transforms into a twisted grin, and he signals his guards. They inch closer, swords at the ready. What will you do? You fall into a fighting stance. As soon as you steel yourself for battle, the Prime Minister and Princess burst in. The Prime Minister orders the guards near you to stand down. The man twirls his cape and leaves, as if nothing happened. You sigh, relieved that you didn't have to shed blood in the castle to resolve the problem. The Prime Minister tells you that man was Count Dean, the younger brother of the King. He is trying to usurp the throne. The scepter indicates the throne's heir. The Prime Minister says Dean had Tomet steal it to deny the princess the throne. The Prime Minister takes the scepter and narrows his eyes in satisfaction. He pays you for completing the request. The fairy you saved in the ruins appears before you. She seems to want to take you somewhere. The fairy leads you into an old, ivy-covered tower. You find yourself in a cluttered room that seems to be a laboratory. Judging by the stratification of dust, much time has passed since anyone last entered this room. Letters amidst the shambles indicate that a magician named Lucane lives here. You find a message he penned on the desk. Lucane wrote that he was off to see a magician friend named Wallace in the underground labyrinth. The fairy uses various interpretive gestures to indicate that she wants you to find him. You accept her job request. You head to Wallace's underground labyrinth to look for the magician Lucane.
This underground labyrinth is said to have been made in a single night with powerful magic. It is a dangerous place, replete with traps. It bars entry to all who would dare. My turn. Done. I got it. Voila. The trap was sprung, and the door magically closed fast. Slime creatures are weak against fire. The torch on the wall could be used to great effect. The clink of metal hitting the ground can be heard. You obtain a magic key to open the door. A mouse darts out and leaps onto your palm. The rodent claims to be the apprentice of Wallace the Magician. He says he was tasked with caring for the laboratory while Wallace was gone, but it is beset by malevolent magic users. When you ask about Lucane, the apprentice answers that his master's friend went into the labyrinth and hasn't returned. Your quest to find Lucane is delayed as you attempt to liberate the lab for Ricky, the magician's apprentice. The door to the laboratory is through this hall. I got it. <clears throat> oh yeah. It's my turn, simple. Because the laboratory was being misused, some of the experiments housed within have now run amok. 
There's been a population explosion of mutated beings that spread their spores around. The labyrinth is overrun by fungi. It's my turn. Simple. They're coming. Destroy the cocoons before they hatch, or they'll keep coming.
gruesome bones that seem to belong to Lucane in the depths of the labyrinth. The tattered raiments and jewelry leave no doubt that the corpse is indeed Lucane's. You bring back the bones of the magician Lucane. You found Lucane, but he was dead. You imagine the fairy will be overcome with grief, but you need to return to her. Wandering one, how can I help you? May they rest in peace. When you enter the laboratory, the fairy frantically flits around you, as if it senses your uneasiness. Upon seeing Lucane's bones, the fairy enters into a panic. She begins tugging at your arm to get you to leave the tower. The fairy is apparently attempting to lead you somewhere. You collect Lucane's bones and... As you enter, you nervously hand the monk. Allow this heart quench their the lead river and away. The prayer reaches the goddess. Lucane, shocked to find himself alive, thanks you profusely. He tells you to visit him at his laboratory and leaves. The resurrected magician has returned to the old tower in town. You decide to see him to ask more details. The magician Lucane is waiting for you in the laboratory of the old tower. It seems that dying had an adverse effect on his short-term memory. Lucane is researching magic called runes, which are closely tied to spirits and fairies. Lucane introduces his fairy friend to you. Her name is Tiki. She left the fairy forest due to her strong curiosity. He thanks you again for saving him and allowing him to enjoy life's rich pageant. He displays his magic trinkets. Lucane says that he'd be happy to sell you these items at a fraction of the normal price and answer any questions you have. What will you ask? The magician Wallace was an old friend of Lucane's. He was known as a great magician. He sealed that group, or myopia of Cyclopes, in a labyrinth and saved the land. He also mentored young magicians in his tower. He was also the king's trusted advisor, and Lucane trails off. It seems that Lucane's memory has failed him again. Before you realize it, 
Tiki is following you around. She seems to have taken a liking to you. She will accompany you on your adventures henceforth. Fairies are known to be adept at finding hidden things. A letter from the castle has come to you via the guild. It simply says to report to the castle in all haste. Hmm, you're back. You have a request. You assume that the letter was sent by the Prime Minister. Perhaps he has another request for you. Count Dean is waiting for you at the throne room. It is he who sent the letter. After your previous encounter, you can only assume that he's up to something nefarious. You brace for combat. The guards have drawn their swords and are blocking the exit. Count Dean starts talking to you in a soft voice. He says that he has personally requested your assistance in performing a task for him. He wants you to scout Bilberon Fortress on the border. This underground fortress is a well-known structure. Originally built to defend against the Orc army, it now lies in Orc hands. Scout them and learn their invasion routes. It is a very dangerous mission, but refusal means that you will be at the mercy of Dean's guards. You accept. Per Count Dean's request, you agree to infiltrate and surveil the subterranean fortress at the country's border. <laughs> the Orc army presently controls Bilberon the underground fortress built into the canyon. The king's army has been mounting a fierce offensive to try and reclaim the fortress. What's its matter? You step into the enemy kitchen. A corpulent chef grabs a goblin instead of meat and suddenly stops. The cook, sensing your presence, stares directly at you. Luckily, her sight's not so keen, so she doesn't notice you. Eventually, ask your escape. What? Oh. 
Well, Stan, it's my turn. What? what? Luca. Oh, my.
The bottom of the stairs is an area connected to the sewers. This seems your most likely escape route. <laughs> Defeating the Minotaur, you move through the sewer's filth. The reconnaissance mission went well. You gathered intel and slipped back across enemy lines. Among the treasures you claimed, is the great sword of the hero Javelin. succeeded in acquiring intel on the underground fortress. 
This job will be completed once you report to Count Dean. Report everything you learn to Count Dean. Unfortunately, you also mention the hero's legendary sword. Naturally, he demands the great sword, but at least he's in a good mood now. He thought you'd just flee, but you didn't. It seems that he thinks much more highly of you now. Dean confides in you some of the problems in the castle. Once the king went missing, the Prime Minister began recommending the Archduke McNeil of Bolga to the throne. Bolga is an aggressive nation to the north. McNeil is related to the King of Hydland and has a legal claim to the throne. Count Dean claims that McNeil has been rallying nobles in Hydland to support his claim to the throne. That's why Dean hired Tomit to steal the scepter. He says that Tomit is extremely trustworthy so long as he is paid. Suddenly, the Prime Minister and the Princess appear. It seems you are being watched. The Count glowers and departs. The Prime Minister warns you not to involve yourself any further. The Princess, as usual, looks back with blank eyes. Since you completed the job at the castle, you return to the Adventurer's Guild to tell them what transpired. <laughs> Roland also happens to be here to report on a job. However, Samuel is not here. Roland is waiting for him to return. Roland thinks that he just missed him and asks you to track down the Guildmaster and bring him back. You look for Samuel, the Guildmaster. He should be somewhere in town. Wandering one, how can I help you? You stand before the goddess statues, Jula, Althena, and Vernas. These statues have all crumbled. Texts say the goddesses sacrificed themselves to defeat a dragon which caused their likenesses to degrade as well. Althena, the one in the center, is the goddess of compassion 
battle, and odyssey, making her popular with adventurers. If your party falls during your adventure, a prayer to Althena and a tithing of your money will resurrect the party. If you are repeatedly depending on her grace, the amount you must offer for her services will continually increase. A giant man in armor finishes his prayers and turns around. His pensive expression quickly turns fierce as he sees you. He tells you he was praying because he has sent many friends to look for the king, but they haven't found the slightest clue. When you ask to help, Samuel just nods and hands you a request form. It's the same request the temple gave you. In a remote region, marriageable girls are disappearing one by one. The catacombs are believed to be linked somehow. Allow this heart. Allow this heart. May they rest in peace. As you leave the temple, a ragged old man slumped in the road calls out to you in a gravelly voice. His raspy voice makes it difficult for you to discern if he's even speaking your language. You can give him a coin if you feel pity for him. Of course, you're free to walk away as well. He doesn't even acknowledge the coin. He mutters over and over. You probably won't be able to communicate with him, no matter how long you strain your concentration. To solve the mystery of the disappearances, you head to the catacombs where the villagers fear to tread. In the catacombs, stark white bones are strewn about the ground as far as the eye can see. The sheer number of the deceased is the only indication left of this area's former prosperity. A strange knight stumbles out of the darkness towards you. You surmise that he is not of this world. 
The knight is muttering to himself as if in a daze. If I end my own life, they can no longer sacrifice me. When you move closer, the knight extends his hand. He's holding a scroll. When you accept it, the knight disappears. The path ahead of you is connected to the ruins of the castle colloquially called the Castle of the Dead. In olden times, whenever a girl disappeared, the locals would say she'd been called to the Castle of the Dead. Because ghosts are incorporeal, they are completely immune to physical attacks. Their weakness is light. Torchlight will drive them off. Saved a village girl. You must protect her now. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got it. Voila. You saved a village girl. You must protect her now.
It's my turn. Done. <laughs> the vampire smirks and flies away. You saved a village girl. You must protect her now. Protect the village girl. If she is bitten by the others, she will become a vampire as well. Kidnapped girls had been turned. They are now vampires, attacking other people. You utter a silent prayer, hoping that you have slain the last vampire and leave the ruins. In your hands is the bloody scroll that the ghost knight had given you. You have unraveled the mystery of the village girl's disappearances. Obtain your reward at the guild. Curious about the bloody scroll. You show Samuel the scroll and tell him what you saw in the catacombs. After examining the scroll, the signature and other details indicate that it is a letter from the king to the princess. 
It is a report telling her that he had obtained the dragon's crown. You wonder if this letter is true. You can't deny that the ghost was clad in mail that was eerily similar to the king's armor. So perhaps this is true. The king's death will profoundly affect the kingdom and neighboring lands. Samuel orders you to report it to the castle. Hmm, you're back. You have a request. Stop! Immediately you are overwhelmed by guards and thrown into the castle jail, charged for a crime you did not commit. This is a common fate for people who hold a royal secret. You are being removed from the drama at the castle. After a few days, the cell door opens. Once your eyes grow reacclimated to light, you see Count Dean standing before you. He unshackles your ankles and explains the situation to you. The Prime Minister had been jailing all of Dean's allies. As expected, Gustav was working for Bolga. He used a magical necklace to control the princess and influence Heidland. Once Dean got Princess Vivian to safety and confronted the Prime Minister, Gustav fled with a ship full of treasure. The princess apologizes for involving you in this. While she was a hostage, Dean couldn't confront the Prime Minister. This kingdom needs a new ruler immediately. Dean is no saint, but he would make a good leader, you think. However, when Gustav fled, he also stole the royal orb, another treasure that represents the right to rule Hydland. If McNeil gets the orb, it will likely result in civil war. However, the orb does not appear to have reached Bolga. Princess Vivian asks for your help with this incident. You immediately agree and begin searching for the orb. Gustav's ship chose a pirate route, likely to elude captors. Perhaps his artifice was his undoing. You should investigate. To get the orb back, you travel to Ghost Ship Cove, a known pirate hideout. Inside of the cave connects to a fissure on the coastline. It seems large enough to contain another ocean. Sailors dread passing through this area. There are myriad tales of ships disappearing here. Outstanding. It's my turn. Done. Whoa. Yeah! 
again. <laughs> a beautiful voice in the sea calls out to you. You'd heard of Mermaid's legendary curiosity. She asks you many questions. From your conversation, you learn Gustav's ship was indeed attacked by pirates. That means pirates likely have the orb. According to the mermaid, the pirates scattered throughout the islands use this area as a hub for trade amongst themselves. Rumors claim that among their treasures is a magic lamp that can call forth a doom. Duplicitous. It was all a ruse. The pirates were spying on you the entire time. Elliot Pidd, the name of the ship's owner, is written here. Oh, I can do that.
Turn quite dire if you don't take it from me. The pirate has pulled the genie out. Quick, get the lamp out of the pirate's hands. You have summoned forth a genie. Don't let them take the lamp. Magic lamp granted a wish and flew off. You find the orb stolen by the Prime Minister among the treasure the pirates left behind. You reclaim the stolen royal orb.
The orb you retrieved must be returned to the castle. The princess and count can't contain their surprise. They'd already resigned themselves to the worst possible outcome. You've won a great deal of favor from the royal family. The princess smiles upon you, and Dean trusts you implicitly. The succession imbroglio has been dealt with. Once the king is buried and parliament approves, Dean will succeed the king. Still, the future king wears a somber expression. He knows Hydland still faces many difficult challenges. The Xingyak Orc tribe is pushing in from the east, and more tribes are joining their ranks. They're an ever-present menace. Also, while Hydland is currently at peace, Bulgo will surely strike if they sense an advantage. Worse still, the evil enchanters of the Mornion religion have cast their lot with the Bolgan threat. You are beginning to grasp why the last king of Hydland risked his life to find the dragon's crown. I need it, Dean mumbles quietly. After completing a large task, you return to a normal routine, fulfilling requests on behalf of the Adventurer's Guild. Whilst reviewing the outstanding requests at the guild, you spot one from the magician Lucane. It is about rune magic, but since you don't know too much about the subject, you're not sure what is requested. You tell Guildmaster Samuel that you'll accept this job, and pay Lucane a visit to inquire about the details. Hmm, you're back. You entered Lucane's tower to ask about his request. When you tell him that you have taken on his request, he immediately starts filling you in on the details. Certain Elysian ruins are highly regarded as a sacred area by monks. Unfortunately, monsters are desecrating these ruins. Monks were dispatched to purify the area, but the golems that used to protect the ruins have turned on the monks. Golems are controlled with rune magic. They asked Lucane to craft new golems with runes to pit against the old golems. So Lucane requested that someone go in his stead and use rune magic to craft golems. Do you comprehend how runes work? 
If you need an explanation, you can ask him. Lucane hands you a stone that has a rune carved into it. Activate the two runes on the statue, and then add the stone's rune to cast the three-letter spell that animates it. You press forward and begin looking for runes. Oh, which one? You head to the ancient temple ruins at Lucane's behest. There you need to animate statues using rune magic. Many things lie within the ruins of the old Elysian Temple. Some quiescent, some far lesser. An ancient dragon spoken of in myths is said to have destroyed the Elysian civilization in one night. It's my turn. Done. army is apparently getting here via the waterway. Their cargo is various articles from ships that have been reported missing. Oh, yes. Voila! Oh, my. It's my turn. Simple. Outstanding. As you investigate the wall painting, you detect that the area behind the wall has been hollowed out. Let's 
seen. Voila! More nests similar to this one spread throughout the area. You exit the area, taking care to avoid drawing the attention of any other harpies. 